Hello everyone, so in this video we are going to take a look at the mechanics behind the wind at Snowhead. For casual players this presents a barrier between the mountain village area and Snowhead Temple which requires the player to learn and use the Goron Lullaby to progress. Speedrunners on the other hand use some high speed movement glitches in order to overcome the strong winds, a trick which is known as Lullaby Skip. This trick is a crucial part of many modern speedruns of this game. This video will be split in three sections as we look at the different factors in play. These will be 1. The Goron's animation cycle 2. The wind cycles and wind speed calculation and 3. The effect on Link's movement. While the mathematics needed in this video are quite straightforward, I will be expressing some equations in vector form. I appreciate that some viewers may not have come across vectors before, so I will do my best to explain any instances where I'm using them without turning this into a maths lesson. And with that, let's get started. When first entering the Snowhead area, Tata will alert the player that she has noticed something in the blizzard. This is a prompt for the player to use the Lens of Truth, which then reveals the source of the winds to be a Goron. It's obvious that the Goron follows a pattern that relates to the wind's strength, so let's have a look at it in more detail. On closer examination, we find that the cycle this Goron follows can be split into four different animations, or stages as we'll call them. The first stage is while the Goron simply sits idle. The second stage is the inhalation. The third stage is exhalation, which triggers the strong winds. And finally, the fourth stage is simply returning to the idle state. We can now put these results into a table and also count the duration of each stage in frames. We find that each stage after the first is of fixed length, while the first stage lasts a total of 20 to 40 frames. This length is determined by a random number generator, or RNG for short. Specifically, this number is generated on the final frame of stage 4, and this is of course the source of the inconsistency between the periods of the wind cycles. What's also interesting to note is that each of the other stages is actually one frame shorter than its associated animation. This is simply because it was easier for the developers to check that an animation reached its final frame than it would be to check that all frames were played. This is where things will get a little more complicated. A perhaps little known fact about the N64 Zelda games is that there is a wind direction and speed already defined. This is not immediately obvious as very few things seem to interact with this, but by experimenting with the values we can identify some things that are affected. These include, for example, the direction of rain and snowfall. As you might have guessed, it just so happens that Link also falls into this category. We'll look at exactly how wind is applied to Link's movement later, but first let's look at the wind speed calculation. Here we have an overhead view of the snowhead area. First, let's highlight the Goron's position, as this will be important for later. On the last frame of the Goron's inhaling animation, an actor is spawned at this position that will modify the wind speed in the area according to the following formula. So, we have two variables in this equation that need explaining, D and A. Let's see what they do. D is calculated as the distance between Link and the wind source. In this case, the distance is calculated in two dimensions, ignoring the Y component of the vectors, which is vertical in the game's coordinate system. One thing to note here is that distance will be capped at 5000 to prevent the wind speed from ever becoming negative. The variable A is what I will refer to as the wind amplitude. 
This is a function of time, which takes the following form. Here, t is a frame count. Once the function reaches a value greater than or equal to 32,768, it will then begin decreasing until less than or equal to zero. It may be easier to visualize this function on a graph, so let's do that. Once this function hits zero, the actor controlling the wind speed will then unload. This means that the wind speed will be changing for a total of 56 frames. Now if we go back to the wind speed calculation after looking at these two variables, we can see that the term containing them will always be a real number in the range of 0 to 1. The wind speed will then be between 30 and 1030. The reason for the minimum being 30 is simply because this is the default wind speed in this area. Knowing that the wind speed depends upon the link's distance from the source, an interesting thing we can notice is the way the flags respond to the wind differently depending on where Link is standing. Now that we know that the actor controlling the wind is active for 56 frames, let's see how this lines up with the Goron's animation cycle. What we notice from this is that the wind is actually still active until 16 frames into the Goron sitting animation. This means that the cooldown between wind cycles is 33 to 53 frames. Finally, we need to look at how the wind speed affects Link's movement. Earlier, we noted that the wind has two components, direction and speed. We looked at speed in the previous section, but this is where the direction also becomes important. Let's define this as the vector w. The wind direction in this area is then minus 1 in the x direction and minus 119 in the z direction. We will also need to use the unit vector for w, which is simply the vector divided by its magnitude. An important thing to note is that this vector actually gives the direction the wind is coming from, which is opposite the direction it acts in. Going back to our view of Snowhead, we can then overlay the wind's acting direction on the image. There are two conditions to satisfy for the wind to have any effect on Link. These two conditions are that the wind speed must be greater than 50, and the direction vector must be non-zero. The equation for applying this to Link's movement is the following where u is Link's velocity vector, with i denoting the vector before applying the wind, and net being this vector after applying the wind. But there is one quantity in this equation that we still need to explain, and this is the scalar value s. This is a quantity that I will call the susceptibility, which is listed in the table shown. This is different for each form of link and gives the impact the wind has on that particular form. This is the reason why Goron Link is more resistant to the wind than other forms and why using the Goron Mask makes part of the lullaby skip trick easier than it is in human form. We can also make a direct comparison between forms in the game by keeping a constant wind and changing masks. So in this video we have seen how the wind cycles work, as well as finding the equations that determine the wind speed at Snowhead, and how this is applied to Link's movement. That is about all for this video, so thank you for watching, and I hope that you found this informative. To finish up here, I just want to ask one question. What if, somehow, we could manipulate the wind direction?